our ancestors watched the planets, the sun and the stars drifting across the sky. From these regular motions, they could predict the season for planting crops and the time to prepare for winter. They learned how to sail the oceans using stars for navigation. Astronomy was our first true science. 400 years ago, Italian genius Galileo pointed a telescope at the sky for the first time. He saw mighty Jupiter and its host of smaller moons. He also saw the difference between night and day on Venus. Galileo saw that planets are not just pinpricks of light, they're worlds. Worlds that we can explore. In just the last hundred years, we've learned that our sun is one of billions in a gigantic, swirling galaxy, the Milky Way. And we've realised that the universe contains billions upon billions of galaxies. And in just the last 50 years, something has happened that would have amazed Galileo. We've sent robot spacecraft across the solar system and into the realms of space beyond. And we've sent humans to the moon. We've got smart robot rovers wheeling their way across Mars. And there are people living in space. We've launched satellites into orbit, which provide us with global communications. So much of our daily lives depend on these satellites, from sat-navs and sky TV to weather forecasting. And millions of lives are saved by observing and predicting dangerous storms. Above all, we've seen what our home world, the Earth, looks like from far off in space. It looks small. It looks fragile. It's fascinating to compare Earth with our nearest neighbouring worlds. Venus is far too hot for life, and Mars is far too cold. So how come the Earth is just right? And how can we keep it that way? Earth is the only home we've got. As we explore the depths of the universe, we realise just how special this little planet of ours really is. So we'd better look after it, because there's nowhere else for us to go. In the end, that's what space exploration is all about. It's about us and our home. <laughs>